Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praises are due to Allah Abundant praises are due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala For the many blessings He's bestowed upon us And the greatest blessing He's given us as we repeat it Time and time again in this world is the blessing of Islam As Imam Ali radiallahu anhu mentioned إِنَّ مِنْ نَعِيمِ الدُّنْيَا أَنْ يَكْفِيَكَ الْإِسْلَامُ نِعْمَةً From the blessings of this world is that Islam suffices as a blessing. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our appreciation of this blessing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in His noble and exalted scripture أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانُ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي قُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ Allah Ta'ala mentions, as we translate, that verily those who say, our Lord is Allah, and thereafter they are upright. ثُمَّ The uprightness in many definitions. One of our great scholars, he said, الْإِسْتَقَامَةُ إِمْتِثَالُ الْمَأْمُرَاتِ وَاجْتِنَابُ عَنِ الْمَنْهِيَاتِ عَلَى سَبِيلِ الدَّوَامِ وَالثَّبَاتِ Imtithal min al ma'thurat is the exact words. Imtithal al imtithalu min al ma'thurat to implement those things that we've been commanded with. So to implement all of those things we've been commanded with, and some of them clarify by saying qawlan wa fi'lan wa khuluqan. Those things we've been commanded with in terms of our speech. So istaqama is to always, to the best of our ability, speak like a Muslim should speak. So we take no pride in gutter language. We take no pride in being able to utter profanities in the same manner as some person who has no religious training at all. Qawlan wa fi'lan, and in our actions. And those things we've been ordered to undertake as a Muslim, to be consistent in our prayer, to be consistent in our, in our, our acts of worship, be they the Qur engaging with the Qur'an consistently, not waiting for Ramadan. In a couple weeks, some people will go to their shelf, dust off their Qur'an, and then they'll get busy and then after Ramadan put it up. No, istaqama is to engage with the Qur'an constantly and to be enriched by the Qur'an on an ongoing, in an ongoing fashion. In all of our acts of worship and in our character to constantly seek to improve our character, to constantly seek to remain on the character of the believers Rather, we're in the company of the non-believe of not non-believers. They could be righteous people who actually encourage us towards good character, such as honesty and uh, fidelity, etc. But no matter what situation we're in, to constantly try to exemplify the character that a believer should exemplify. So he said, "Al istaqamatu." الامتثال من المأثورات to implement those things that we've been commanded to implement والاجتناب عن المنهيات and to avoid those things we've been prohibited from and to do that consistently so not occasionally not most of the time but to endeavor to do them all of the time to avoid the things we've been forbidden to speak about to avoid the things we've been forbidden to engage in so a, a person who is striving for istaqama is not a part-time Muslim, is not a part-time believer. 
you know, occasionally, you know, if I'm with the right people, you know, I can get down and I can smoke the joint also. You know, I can take a, take a sip on the wine or the beer or whatever. That's not istiqamah. Istiqamah is to be consistent. Umar radiallahu an, he said, Al-istiqamatu an tastaqimu wa la tarugu rawagan al-thalab. That, that you are consistent, that you go straight. And that you don't uh, maneuver like a fox. That you're not maneuvering in your religion. I can find a loophole over here. Or a loophole over there. Loopholes are for taxes, not for religion. It's the commas for religion. We're not looking for the way out. We're not looking for the shortcut. We're not looking for uh, unlawful ease. We look for ease in the situation that requires ease because Allah facilitates ease in our warfare. But we're not looking for some illegal ease or some ease that comes through some far-fetched interpretation or machination with the religion. This is what Umar was warning against. And تستقيموا الاستقامت أن تستقيموا ولا تروغوا روغان الثعلب You don't zigzag like the fox. You know, I can dodge this ruling, I can get around this, and I can figure out a way I don't have to do this. No, we, we walk on the straight path, and we try to go straight. And that's the way of our religion. So Allah Ta'ala says about those people, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ثُمَّ استقاموا. And He says, ثُمَّ استقاموا. This, this uh, uh, conjunction, thumma. The grammarians, they say, you feed at tarahi. It conveys the meaning of the elapsing of a significant period of time. And it's relative to the situation. So istiqama doesn't come overnight. At first we're struggling. You know, we take our shahada and we miss a prayer here or there. We, we slip back into a habit we might have had. Had, but we keep working at it, and we keep working at it, and gradually we overcome those things. And so, istiqamah, we shouldn't get frustrated if what's being described to consistently and unwaveringly adhere to those things we've been, uh, implement those things we've been ordered to implement, and avoid those things we've been ordered to avoid in our speech, our actions, in our character, and we're not there, don't get frustrated, keep working. Keep working. And in time, inshallah ta'ala, we'll get there. But it takes work. We mentioned uh, in the other night, in another context, the, the inspiration, these were the words, it was sort of spontaneous, but we'll try to capture it. Inspiration only comes, becomes permanent through perspiration. So we can be inspired. We can have a, a state that we temporarily attain to. But that state will only become permanent by perspiration, by hard work. So we mentioned this is one reason. Some of the spiritual paths, they, they put the aspirant into the khalwa, into the state of isolation. And hopefully it will be successful. They'll get a glimpse of what they're aiming for. So they'll know what they're working towards. So they've seen the goal. And now having seen the goal, it will motivate them to put in the work so that what they experienced temporarily in the khalwa becomes their permanent state subsequently. So that was good. I want that to be how I am all the time, okay? Get busy. You have, this is not Islam, brothers and sisters, is not a religion for lazy people. A lazy person can go to heaven. Don't get me wrong. But those people who want to hit the heights, those people who want to grow, those people who want to elevate, you have to work for it. It's not going to come easy and it's not going to come cheap. Nothing in this world that's valuable comes easy. And nothing in this world that's truly valuable comes cheap. You have to pay the, th the price. Had to summon. To read Hada, Hatithaman, Wathamanuhu Ghal. 
You want it? Pay the price and the price is steep. It doesn't come cheap. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا And this is the advice the Prophet, this reflects, this verse is a reflection of the advice the Prophet gave, gave to one of his companions. When Sufyan bin Abdullah al thaqafi came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him, Ya Rasulallahi, قُلْ لِي فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْلًا لَا أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُ أَحْدًا غَيْرُكْ أَحْدًا غَيْرَكْ فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Proclaim your belief in Allah and Sufyan bin Abdullah Thaqafi was already a believer. In other words, renew your faith. So we have to renew our faith. And one way we renew our faith is by reclaiming it, by restating it, to remind ourselves what we've committed ourselves to. It's a reminder. Remind yourself of what you've committed yourself to and then work for it, work towards its attainment. This is what Allah Ta'ala is telling us and this is what our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us. And we should heed this lesson. One of the reasons that we slip sometimes and we feel ourselves backtracking is because we lose sight of what we've committed ourselves to. We get into the mundane, everyday, bump and grind of life and we forget it. Hey, wait a minute. I left that because I wanted this. I wanted what Islam had to offer. That's why I left all of the nonsense I was wrapped up with. Now look at me slipping back into that nonsense. What am I doing? We have to remind ourselves. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا أَحَدُوا اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ Amongst the believers there are men, and women of course, but specifically in this verse, men who are truthful in the covenant they've convened with Allah. صَدَقُوا مَا أَحَدُوا اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ They are truthful in the covenant they've convened with Allah. So we should be truthful in what we've committed ourselves to when we say لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله and then Allah Ta'ala says تتنزل عليهم الملائكة so at the time of their death the angels descend upon them and they remind them ألا تخافوا don't be afraid of what's ahead of you because you're a believer and you strived, and you did your best, and you tried to attain to that state of consistency in your religion. So there, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what's before you. And don't be, don't be saddened by what you've left behind you. Because at the time when we know there's a very serious test and we've taken that test and this dunya is a test for the believers. You're going to be tested, you're going to be tested. This is a test. When you take a test, a very important test, and you finish the test, you're not thinking about the possible 90% that you got right, you're thinking about the 10% you got wrong. Reflect on it. Say, oh man, I knew that answer. Uh, what happened? My brain just froze up. You're not thinking of what you got right. You're thinking about what you got wrong. And so at the time of our death, we're not going to be thinking about how many Ramadans we have, have in. We're not going to be thinking about how many Salats we pray five times a day for X number of days. We're going to be thinking about that lie we told. We're going to be thinking about that person we might have cheated or defrauded. We're going to be thinking about that insult we hurled in a moment of heedlessness. But the angels are there to reassure the believers who have proclaimed their faith, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ and who have striven 
to implement what Allah Ta'ala would have us to implement and to avoid what He would have us to avoid. ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزُّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا Don't be fearful of what a, what's ahead. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا And don't be saddened by what's behind you. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ And have glad tidings of the paradise you've been promised. This is what we're living for, brothers and sisters. Sometimes we put so much focus on this world and what's going on and transpiring in this world and how we're going to do our part to change the world. And that's all good. But we forget we are not living for this world. We're living in this world, but we're living for the Akhirah. We're living in this world, but we're not living for this world. We do what we can do in this world. We do what we can do for the betterment of this world, but not at the expense of our soul. Not at the expense of our soul. And we understand, this is, and this is one of the most important lessons we can learn today. We understand that as we struggle in this world, our struggles are not about winning or losing. Our struggle is about obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying within the limits set by Allah. Tilka hududullah fala taqrabuha. Tilka hududullahi fala tafala ta'taduha. These are the limits set by Allah. Don't come close to them. These are the limits set by Allah. Don't trans transgress them. So we understand winning and losing, that's Allah's affair. لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ عَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمِ Victory only comes from Allah. In the Quran, وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Victory only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't come from us. And then so after saying that, what does Allah Ta'ala say? وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ You have nothing to do with this affair. The outcome of this affair. Your job is to strive within the limits that have been set. The victory comes from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This was revealed after Uhud. Allah said, you, you want it better. You lost at Uhud. But you had nothing to do with the outcome of the affair. Victory only comes from Allah, the mighty, the wise. Our challenge is to stay within the limits. And this is a challenge we need now. Because of the, the, the inhumane viciousness with which many of those forces arrayed not only against the Muslims, but against the poor struggling people of this world in general, and at the head of them, our very nation. And not everyone in the nation, they're good people, but those controlling the mechanisms of policy, those controlling the military, industrial, and now the security industrial complex, the brutality and viciousness with which they with impunity destroy and ravage the lives and lands of innocent people inspire some Muslims to want to respond in kind. But that will never bring victory. Because we can only have victory through the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah ta'ala is not pleased that we transgress against the limits that He set. Regardless of the circumstances or the situation. This is a lesson we have to internalize. Because these verses are reminding us of spiritual realities. Number one, our death. Even Muslims, we're, we, we're so caught up in this materialistic reality that surrounds us. Or the materialistic, let me rephrase that, the materialistic illusion that surrounds us that we lose touch with the spiritual reality that is the ultimate reality. Because what is physical passes, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا ثَانٍ وَيَبْقَ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Only Allah remains in the end. This is all transitory. Those realities 
associated with Allah. Those are the lasting realities. And the lasting realities come from our spiritual works. The realities we might, or illusions we might attain, that are laudable by any standard, and by the standard of our religion, they're transitory. They're transitory. We achieve a political victory. Does the political, the political circumstance, our efforts have helped to shape, does it endure forever? Sometimes it might not even endure for a decade. This is a lesson of history. But Allah Ta'ala tells us, وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا it is the lasting reward from the good deeds that you do that are best with your Lord as a reward and best for you to hope for. Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat The good, the enduring good deeds. And our worldly strivings are part of those bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. But we shouldn't take our eye off the prize. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَادُونَ Have glad tidings of the paradise that you have been promised. That is the prize. When Allah Ta'ala talks about the prize, what does He tell us? وَأُخْرَى تُهِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ فَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ That's something else. Something you would all love, victory from Allah and help from Allah and a speedy victory. But the fowls... وَيُدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدٍ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ And forgiveness from your Lord. What greater thing can we get than forgiveness for our sins? What if we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're carrying the mountain of sin that we've accumulated in this world? Allah ta'ala says forgiveness from your Lord. And he will enter you into beautiful gardens beneath which rivers flow. And beautiful mansions in gardens of Eden. That is the great victory. In terms of our worldly victories, وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our religion doesn't neglect our worldly state. But it helps us to keep everything in the proper priority. Something else you would also love. That is the great victory. يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَيُدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدٍ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Something else you would all love, help from Allah and the speedy victory, give glad tidings to the believers. So we have worldly work and we have worldly victories. But we should never take our eyes off the big victory. Because if we compromise our principles and compromise and violate the commandments that govern our action, then we lose the great victory seeking the lesser victory. And this is what we're reminded. Some of us converted to Islam from Christianity, myself included. One verse in the Bible that resonates in this context what profits it a man that he gains the world and loses his very soul? What profits it a man that he gains the world but loses his very soul? So Allah Ta'ala, He tells us the angels descend. And then what do they say? نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ That we are your protectors. And we are your supporting friends in this world and in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, we're never alone. Neither in this world nor in the hereafter. Allah Ta'ala reminds us, the angels are with us. Not only the angels. Sometimes we can become desperate and think we're all alone. Or think that the forces arrayed against us. And all of these weapons and all of the money and all of the resources and all of the alliances arrayed against the Muslims. It is overwhelming. 
And people get desperate and despair. Some people give up and stop struggling, stop working altogether. The angels are with us. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And you, uh, the, the order is important because that despair, first and foremost, it, it can afflict us in this world. So Allah Ta'ala reminds us, the angels are with us. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And not just the angels, the birds. On the day of the, the, the feel, Ashab al-feel, Allah Ta'ala sent the birds against the forces of Abraha. The birds are with us, the trees are with us, the skies, the clouds, the rains, they're all with us. And those who seek to, to undermine and to distort and to disfigure and dis defame this beautiful religion, they only have one wali or one set of awliya shaitan. The awliya is shaitan. And at the end of the day, the struggle in this world is not a new struggle. There are new labels to describe the various parties. But it's a simple struggle that's been waged since shaitan assailed Adam alayhi salam. It's the struggle between the awliya of Allah and the awliya of shaitan. That's the struggle. Awliya Allah wa awliya shaitan. And Allah Ta'ala is telling us it is a struggle. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ التَّاغُوتِ فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا So Allah says, fight against the awliya of shaitan. And know the level of your fight. Know the level of your struggle. But understand it's a struggle. And if we just stand back and we're just passively cruising along down the road of life, believe you, you're gonna be, we're going to be waylaid by one of the awliya of shaitan. We're going to be waylaid by one of the awliya of shaitan. So Allah Ta'ala, the angels tell us, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ We are your supporters and your protectors in this world and in the hereafter. So you're never alone, brothers and sisters. Never imagine, never think that you're alone. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورُ This is... Allahumma salli rasulillah. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ so we are your protectors in this world and in the next. And in the, and in the next, you will have everything that your soul longs for. And you will have everything that you could summon. So no matter what happens in this world, we're heading for a place where we will have joy and we will have bliss and we will have rewards that we cannot even imagine. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَمَا وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ Whatever we want. And what is it that is waiting for us? When we say keep our eye on the prize, it's only a metaphorical statement. فَفِي الْجَنَّةِ مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا عُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَمَا قَطَرْ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Waiting for us is what no human eye has ever beheld. What no human ear has ever heard. And what has never been imagined by a human heart. Another thing, the greatest delight you could imagine is inadequate to describe the joys of paradise. This is what is waiting for us. And Allah Ta'ala says this is a, this is a, a, a gift and this is sustenance from a merciful, from a forgiving and merciful God. Nuzulam min ghafur rahim. Nuzulam min ghafur rahim. Our Lord is merciful, brothers and sisters. Never doubt it. Never lose sight of it. Never lose touch with that reality. And He's forgiving. We talked about those who 
might meet Allah with a mountain of sin, you would have to work very hard because Allah's forgiveness is deep. And Allah loves to forgive sins. Allah loves to forgive sins. Ramadan is coming. About this month, Abu Hurairah radiallahu an has said, يُغْفَرُوا فِيهِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى Everyone is forgiven in Ramadan except one who, who refuses. وَقَالُوا وَمَنْ يَأْبَى يَا أَبَى هُرَيْرَةِ They said, hearing that, who would ever refuse, O oh, Abu Hurairah? قَالَ مَنْ يَأْبَى أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ He said, one who refuses to ask Allah for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, the only thing between us and forgiveness is to ask Allah for forgiveness. مَنْ يَبَّى أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ Ask Allah for forgiveness. Ask Allah for forgiveness. And in Ramadan, ask with, with special passion and special commitment. And then, we'll stop here. Allah Ta'ala, He starts by reminding us about our speech. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا And then our being upright. And once we've internalized those lessons, once we are upright in our speech, and once we have affirmed our tawheed, and we've affirmed and we've striven to, to actualize that in our actions and in our character, then we're in a position to call people to it. So Allah Ta'ala then says, وَمَنْ أَحْسِنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ And who is better in their speech than one who calls to Allah. Who is better in their speech than one who calls to Allah. So there's a foundation for that. And that foundation is affirming Tawheed with sincerity and depth. And then striving to actualize that through our actions. And then we're in a position and we have a foundation to call to Allah. He says who's better in speech than one who calls to Allah. وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحَةِ And so we still... The connection between the speech and the action in this context is just as important. So that our speech is not empty when we make the call. And it's not contradicted by our actions. وَمَنْ أَحْسِنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَيْلَ اللَّهُ وَعَمَلَ الصَّالِحَةِ So those people prepare themselves. Their actions are consistent with their speech. This reminds us we are not a religion of talk. We don't give good speeches. And then do nothing. We work. And then we speak. So this second speech. وَمَنْ أَحْسِنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعِي اللَّهِ It came after the istiqamah. Or the effort and striving. We are workers. Our Prophet Sallallahu worked. Everyone who followed in his way worked. We talk, we listen to the speeches of Malcolm X. But Malcolm X didn't, didn't just talk, he built institutions. He trained people. He started newspapers. He was instrumental in starting Muhammad Speaks newspaper. He worked. He just didn't talk. And because he worked when he talked, his speech had more power. His speech had more power. Because it wasn't based on just sound, it was based and built and rooted in action. And that became power. That became power. Because why? Those who work and then they talk, they're doing something pleasing to Allah. How do we know? Because one of the strongest condemnations in the Quran is the condemnation of the one who talks and doesn't work. And it's directed, that condemnation is directed to the believers. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon kabara maqtan indallahi an taquluu ma la taf'aloon O you believers, why do you say that which you don't do? Grievously hated is it with Allah that you say that which you don't do. That's directed to the believers. We're people of, of action. وَمَنْ أَحْسِنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعِي اللَّهِ So who's better in speech than one who calls to Allah and does righteous deeds? وَعَمَلَ الصَّالِحَةً وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And says, verily, proudly, not, not vainglorious pride, 
but dignified, honorable pride. And this is the state of the believers. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ The izzah, the, the, the authority and dignity, dignified authority is for Allah, His Messenger and the believers. The hypocrites realize it not. Don't hang your head because people are talking about you or writing nasty things about you or talking about you on the television or the radio. Hold your head high because you're not alone. And what do you care what the awliya of shaitan say about you anyway? When the angels and the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are with you. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So I pick your head up and understand the awliya, the angels are with you. The, the trees are with you. The birds are with you. The animals are with you. All of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are with you, are with us. So we forge on as dignified human beings. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم رسول المؤمنين يا قوم استغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصعدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Brothers and sisters, as we mentioned, there's a struggle going on in our world, it's clear. And our contribution has to be our greatest contribution at a spiritual level. We have to gather our spiritual resources. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Not one of us, not two of us, most of us. We have to gather our spiritual resources because materially that's the advantage of the awliya of shaitan. Because shaitan, he only sees the material. He revels in the material. When he was asked to prostrate to Adam, what was his claim? مَا مَنْعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُ قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتُهُ مِنْ طِينٍ he pointed to his physical, what he perceived to be his physical superiority. Why didn't you prostrate when you were commanded to do so? I'm better than him. Why is he better? He's more generous, more charitable. He kisses more babies. He does more charitable acts. No, because of his physical composition. You made me from fire. You made him from clay. That makes me better. Every racist follows his footsteps. We're better because of our skin color because of our hair texture, because of this, that, or the other. We're better because of our physical nature. No, Allah Ta'ala teaches us, and time doesn't allow to elaborate, any virtue we have as an ummah only lies in spiritual advantage. And that's what we have to cultivate. First and foremost, if we seek to impact this world, and if we cultivate those qualities, Collectively, believe me, we will impact this world in ways that will boggle the mind. And the next verse talks about that. But we've mentioned those verses before, so we'll stop here. Allahumma gfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat rabbana la tuzik kulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatika anta al wahhab rabbana afrig alayna sabran wa thabbit aqdamana wa tawaffana muslimin rabbana afrig alayna sabran wa thabbit aqdamana wa tawaffana muslimin wa 
فاعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجمن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصعبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ مبلغ إمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعفو عنا وفعل لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على قوم الكافرين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في الشام انصرهم يا الله نصرا من عندك يا الله اللهم انصر المسلمين في فلسطين وفي كل مكان يا الله اللهم انصر المسلمين في أفغانستان وفي باكستان في العراق وفي كل مكان يا الله اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان في كل مكان يا الله في شأت نحى العالم يا الله اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يعصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكم الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله